Great Plays. From sunrise performances in the theaters of ancient Greece down through the ages to the miracle of radio and worldwide broadcasts, the National Broadcasting Company will present a series of ageless dramas showing the development of 2,500 years of dramatic literature from the Greek productions to the plays written especially for radio. We endow our commentator with magic and invite you to go with him to Greece and attend the premiere of a gay satiric comedy by Aristophanes entitled The Birds. As quick as thought, we eliminate the centuries and ask you to be seated in the theater Dionysus, 414 years before the birth of Christ. A holiday spirit has settled over Athens. It is late in the afternoon, but every seat is occupied in this great outdoor theater. The warm March sunshine blends with the revelry of these pleasure-mad Athenians assembled here for the plays produced at the annual religi religious festival in honor of the wine god Dionysus. Whole families anticipate the birds. Business is suspended. The law decrees that debts may not be collected during the festival season when thousands of visitors are in Athens. And strange to relate, prisoners, released temporarily from jail, are seated here with their guards. The stone seats used since the wooden ones collapsed in 449 B.C., rise in an extended semicircle from the orchestra. In the center of the orchestra is an altar erected to the god Dionysus. Beyond this great circle is a gleaming white scene building adorned with stately columns. The comic plot of the birds deals with two old Athenians, Evelpides and Pisthetorus, who are disgusted with their government and life in general. They set out guided by a crow and a jay to consult Terius, the hoopoe bird, who once was human, but through strategy became king of the birds. From him, the disgruntled Greeks hoped to be directed to a utopia. The chorus members are magnificently dressed in feathered costumes, representing every bird imaginable. All the actors wear tremendous masks with expressions typical of their character. The leading actors in their padded robes Thick sole boots and lofty headdresses stand some eight feet in height. No money has been spared by the sponsors of this extravaganza. A center panel in the main doorway represents a wild, desolate track of open country. And as the play opens, the two old Athenians, Evelpides, talking to a jaybird, and Pisthetorus to a crow, enter from the scene building. Straight on, do you bid me go uh, where the tree stands? Oh, hang it all. My crow's croaking backward again. Oh, why are we wandering up and down, you rogue? This endless spin will make an end of us. To think that I, poor fool, at a crow's bidding, should trudge about a hundred miles and more. Mm, to think that I, poor wretch, at a jay's bidding, should wear the very nails from off my feet. Why, where are we? I've not the least idea. Mm. I call Philocrates a regular cheat, the fool that sells the bird trays in the market. He swore these two would lead us straight to Terius, the hoopoe, made a bird in that same market. So we bought this for a coin and that crow for three. But what knew they? Nothing but how to bite. <laughs> Where are you gaping now? Do you want to lead us against the rocks? There's no road here, I tell you. No, nor yet here. Not even the tiniest part. <laughs> well, uh, what says your crow about the road? By Zeus, she croaks differently now. Yeah, what does she say about the road? She says she'll gnaw my fingers off. Yeah, yeah, that's all she says. Ah, now, isn't it a shame that when we are here, ready and willing as two men can be, we can't find the way. We, with rights of tribe and race unchallenged, spread both our uh, feet and flew away from home. Not that we hate our city as not being a prosperous, mighty city, free for all to spend their wealth in uh, paying fines and fees. Aye, the cicadas chirp upon the boughs one month or two, but the Athenians chirp over their laments all their whole life long. That's why we are journeying on this journey now, trudging along with basket, pot, and myrtles to find some quiet, easy-going spot where we may settle down and dwell in peace. Therius the hoopoe is our journey's aim, to learn if he, in any place he has flown to, has seen the sort of city that we want. Hey, you there! Uh, what now? My crow keeps croaking upwards! Ever so long. Oh, and here's my jackdaw gaping up in the air, as if to show me something. Mm -hmm. There must be birds about, I'm sure of that. 
Uh, let's make a noise and we shall soon find out. <laughs> then, Harky, bang your leg against the rock. Uh, and you your head. There'll be twice the noise. <laughs> well, take a stone and knock. Who be the folk that seek me? Why, it's Terrius, the hoopoe bird, and the end of our long journey. <laughs> <laughs> what a feathered mess you are. <laughs> <laughs> All the twelve gods would seem to have wrought your ruin. <laughs> what? Do you cheer me, seeing the way I'm feathered? Strangers, I was once a man. <laughs> well, it's not a cue for laughing. What is it then? What? Are you Terrius? Are you bird or peacock? I am a bird. Oh, oh, then, where are all your feathers? They've fallen off. What? From disease? Or why? No, but in wintertime, all birds are wont to molt their feathers, and then fresh ones grow. But tell me what ye are. We? Mortal men. And of what race? Athens. But what brings you hither? Ooh, to talk with you a little. What about? Well, you were a man at first, as we are now, and had your creditors, as we have now and love to shirk your debts, as we do now. And then you changed your nature and became a bird, and flew around land and sea, and know all that men feel, and all that birds feel too. That's why we have come as suppliants here, to ask if you can tell us of some city, soft, as thick as a rug, to lay us down within. Seek ye a mightier than Athens? Mm, a mightier, no, a more commodious, yes. Aristocratic? Anything but that. Uh, but uh, this, this bird life here, you know it well. What is this like? A pleasant life enough. Foremost and first, you don't require a purse. Ah, there goes a grand corrupter of our life. Then in the gardens, we enjoy the myrtles, the cress, the poppy. Oh, why, then you live a bridegroom's jolly life. Oh, 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 the grand scheme I see in the bird's reach and power to grasp it, if he trusts to me. But what we ought to do, tell us. Live all together. Found one state. What sort of state are birds to found, I wonder? Uh, make this your city. Fence it round with walls, and from your station is evolved your state. So you'll be lords of men. Eh? The earth, the air is betwixt the earth and sky. And just as we, if we would go to Pytho, must crave a grant of passage from Boeotia, even so, when men slay victims to the gods, unless the gods pay tribute, he in turn will grant no passage for the savory steam of sacrifice to rise through chaos and a realm not theirs. Oh, earth, odds, traps and nets and gins and snares. This is the nattiest scheme that e'er I heard of. So with your aid, I'm quite resolved to found the city, if the other birds concur. Oh, uh, and who shall tell them of our plan? Yourself. Huh? Oh, they're not mere barbarians as they were before I came. I've taught them language now. Oh, but uh, how to call them hither? That's soon done. I've but to step within the coppice here and wake my sleeping nightingale, and then we'll call them both together. Bless the birds. When once they hear our voices, they'll come running. Then don't delay one instant. Oh, I beseech you, get you in at once, your little nest, and, and wake the nightingale. Awake, my mate. Procne. Take off thy slumbers, and clear and strong, let loose the floods of thy glorious song. Oh, Zeus and King, the little birdie's voice. Hi. Uh, well, King, quiet. Why? The hoopoe here is going to favor us with another song. Oh. Come hither any bird with plumage like my own. Come hither ye that batten on the acres newly sown. With voices sweet and low. Twitter, flitter to and fro. And ye who in the gardens a pleasant harvest glean. Lurking in the branches of the ivy evergreen. And ye who top the mountains with gay and airy flight. And ye who in the olive and the arbutus delight. Ye that snap up the net shrilly voiced mid the deep water lens of the fens. Ye with the halcyons flitting delightedly over the surge of the infinite sea. Come to the great revolution awaiting us. Hither, come hither. 
For hither has come a shrewd old file. His thoughts on you, new deeds he'll do. Come hither, come hither. See, the birds are everywhere, fluttering onward. Oh, King mm. Apollo, what a cloud. Oh, look there. Now we cannot see the entrance for the numbers crowding in. Uh, here you see a partridge coming. Oh, there by Zeus of Franklin. Ha, 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 ha. Here's an owl. <laughs> <laughs> Jay and turtle, lark and sage bird. Time finch ringed up first, and then, and then cuckoo, falcon, and and, and willow. Oh, oh, for the birds! <laughs> oh, 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 for the blackbirds! Oh, see how they twitter, how they go, shrieking and screaming too, and oh, oh goodness, are they That's, going to charge us? Huh? See all their beaks, they open widely. Uh, that is what occurs to me. Where, 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 where may he be that was calling for me? In what locality, pastor? News amazing, news delightful, safe and free. Birds, two men of subtlest genius, hither have arrived to me. Why? What? When? Say that again. Here, I say, have come two elders, traveling to the birds from man. And they are bringing with them a most stupendous plan. What, what do you say? Now, don't be nervous. What, what is the thing you have done to me? I've received two men enamored of your sweet society. You have really dared to do it? Gladly, I have a deed of vow. And the pair are now amongst us? Aye, if I'm amongst you now. Oh, oh, out upon you. We are cheated and betrayed. He has led us unawares into wiles, into snares. He has given us his prey, all helpless and forlorn. To those who were our foes from the time that they were born. To vile and abominable man. But for him, our bird companion, comes a reckoning by and by. As for these two old deceivers, they shall suffer instantly. Bit by bit, we'll tear and rend them. Oh, here's a very horrid mess, you wretched man. It was you that caused it, you and all your cleverness. Why, you brought me, I can't see. Just that you might follow me. Just that I might die of weeping. What a foolish thing to say. Weeping will be quite beyond you when your eyes are pecked away. On, on. In upon them, make a very bloody onset. Spread your wings about your foes. Assail them and attack them. Oh, here it comes. I'm off. Confound them. Fool, why can't you remain with me? What, that these may tear and rent me? How can you hope from birds to flee? Oh, truly, I haven't the least idea. <laughs> then it is I, the affair must guide. Uh, 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 seize, seize me a pot, and the charge awaiting, here we will combat side by side. A pot? Now, what can a pot avail us? Never an owl will then come near. Oh, one of these birds of prey with talent will <laughs> snatch up a spit, use it like a spear, yeah, planting it firmly there, before you. Oh, what shall I do about my eyes? <laughs> uh, you, you, you take a platter, or, or take a saucer, holding it over them, buckler-wise. Oh, what a skillful, neat contrivance. Yeah. Advance! Advance. Oh. No loitering! Level your beaks and charge away! Shatter the pot at once to pieces! Weary! And scratch! And tear! And blame! Oh, whatever is your purpose, is your villainy so great you would slay two worthy persons, kinsmen, clansmen of my mate, men who never sought to harm you, would you tear and lacerate? What? what? They, they come with words of friendship? You really then suppose they will teach us useful lessons? Our fathers, fathers, foes? Yet to clever folk a foeman very useful hints may show. Thus that foresight brings us safety from a friend we ne'er should know. I admit that something useful may be taught us by a foe. Oh, uh, now their anger grows more slack. Uh, now we'd better just draw, draw back. Yes, yes. This is right and friendly conduct, such as I deserve from you. Well, I am sure that we have never gone against you hitherto. Well, uh, and now they're growing a deal more peaceful. Mm -hmm. Whence are these visitors? And who? From clever Hellas, strangers too. In brief, they've something more than past belief. But, but wherefore is he come? What is it he wants to obtain in his visit? Think you he's got some cunning plan, whereby, allied with us, he can assist a friend? Or harm a foe? What brings him here? I'd like to know. Too great, too great for thought or words, the bliss he promises the birds. 
All things are yours, he says, whate'er exists in space, both here and there, and to and fro, and everywhere. His speech, his speech, let him begin it. The thing you show excites me so, I'm fit to fly this very minute. What to you? The things we summon them to hear, expound, declare. Oh, by Apollo, no, not I, unless they pledge me such a treaty pledge to wit that they'll not bite me. I pledge it. Oh, swear. I, I swear on these conditions that I may win by every boat assembled here today. And so you shall. But if I'm full, then by one boat alone. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Thou hast happily detected some good for the birds which we never suspected. Some power of achievement too high for our own shallow wit to describe. And don't be afraid for the treaty we made. We won't be the first to transgress. <laughs> I'm hot to begin and my spirit within is fermenting the tale to declare. <clears throat> <clears throat> so sorely I grieve for your loss who once in the prime and beginning of time were sovereigns. We, we sovereigns? Of what? Of all that you see. Of him and of me. Of Zeus up there on his throne. A lineage older and nobler by far than the Titans and Cronin ye own. And then Earth. And then Earth? By Apollo, tis true. And I never heard it before. If therefore by birth ye are older than Earth, if before all the gods ye existed, by the right of the firstborn the scepter is yours. Your claim cannot well be resisted. Ah. I advise you to nourish and strengthen your beak and to keep it in trim for a fight. In times prehistoric, it is easily proved by evidence weighty and ample. The birds and not gods were the rulers of men and the lords of the world. Oh! <laughs> for example, time was that the Persians were ruled by the cock, a king autocratic alone. So mighty and great was his former estate that today when he sings in the morning, at once from their sleep all mortals upleap, the cobblers and bakers and the musical instrument makers. Mm -hmm. And the whole of Phoenician Egypt was erst by the masterful cuckoo commanded. So? When his loud cuckoo cry was resounding on high, at once the Phoenicians would leap all hands to the plain, rich waving with grain, their wheat and their barley to reap. Bravo! But the strongest and clearest of proofs is that Zeus, who at present is lord of the sky, stands wearing, as royalty's emblem and badge, an eagle erect on his head. Here, here! Now, they treat you as knaves, as fools and as slaves. Yea, they pelt you as though ye were mad. No safety for you can the temples ensure, for the bird catcher sets his net and his traps and sets you for sale in the lump. And the, the customers buying come poking and prying and twitching and trying to feel if your bodies are tender and plump. And if they decide on your flesh to sup, they don't just roast you and serve you up. For over your bodies, as prone you lie, they grate their cheese. And their sulfium too, an oil and vinegar add. Then a gravy, luscious and rich, they brew. Oh. And pour it in soft warm streams o'er ye, as though you were carrion, loathsome and dry. Tis indeed a most pitiful tale that has brought, brought to our ears. And we can but bewail. And under thy charge, whatsoever befalls, I will place my own self, and my nestlings, and all. Therefore, pray tell us what we must do now, since life is not worth our retaining, unless we be lords of the world as before, our ancient dominion regaining. <laughs> then first, I prepare, propose that the air ye enclose, and the space, Twixt the earth and the sky, encircling it all with a brick-builded wall like Babylon's, solid and high. And there ye must place the abode of your race and make them one state and one nation. <laughs> when the wall is complete, send a messenger fleet the empire from Zeus to reclaim. And if he deny or, or is slow to comply, proclaim ye against him a holy war. And announce that no longer through these regions of yours will the gods be permitted to go. And then let another ambassador bird to men with this message be sent. That the birds, being sovereigns, to them must be paid all the honor and worship divine. But will men believe we are gods? If they see us on wings flying idly about? Oh, don't say such ridiculous things. Why, Hermes and lots of the deities, too, go flying about upon wings. And the thunderbolt flies upon wings, I surmise. But if Zeus upon us let it fall? Yes, yes, yes. But suppose that mankind 
Now, being stupid and blind should account you as nothing at all, and still in the gods of Olympus believe. Why then, like a cloud, shall a swarm of sparrows and rooks settle down on their stocks and devour all the seed in the farm. And truly, the raven shall pluck out the eyes of the oxen that work the plough. But when once they esteem you as God, oh, what joy shall be theirs. Will you kindly inform me of one? <laughs> the delicate tendrils and bloom of the vine, no more shall locusts molest. One gallant band of kestrels and owls shall rid them at once of the pest. No more shall the mite and the gall king blight, the fruit of the fig tree devour. A thrush's one troop on their army shall swoop and clear them all off in an hour. But well, how shall we furnish the people with wealth? It is wealth that they mostly desire. Choice blessings, and rare ye shall give them whene'er they come to your shrine to inquire. As the seer, ye shall tell them when it's lucky and well for a merchant to sail o'er the seas, so that never a skipper again shall be lost. What, never? Explain, if you please. Are they seeking to know when a voyage to go? The bird shall give answers to guide them. Now stick to the land. There's a tempest at hand. Now sail. And good luck shall be tied them. A galley for me. I'm off to the sea. No longer with you will I stay. The treasures of silver, long since in the earth by their forefathers hidden away, too many shall show for the secrets ye know. How often a man will declare, there's no one who knows where my treasures repose, if it be not a bird of the air. I will buy me a hoe and dig for the crock and casket. But health is a blessing divine. Can we give it to men if they ask it? If they've plenty of wealth, they've plenty of health. I thought thee at first of my foam and the worst. And lo, I found thee the wise and best of my friends, and our nation intends to do whatsoe'er thou advisest. So all that by muscle and strength can be done, we birds will assuredly do. But, but whatever by prudence and skill must be won, we lead all together to you. We must be up and doing. And do you, or ere we start, visit this nest of mine, my bits of things, my little sticks and straws. And uh, tell me what your names are. Oh, uh, that's soon done. Uh, my name is Pistatrus. And your friends? Evalpides of Creo. Well, ye are both heartily welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, come ye in. Aye, uh, come we in. Oh, no, you, please, uh, proceed us. Uh, come. And, uh, Prothne, come hither, dear, and let the strangers see you. Oh, by Zeus, oh, what a darling, lovely little bird. Mm -hmm. How fair and tender. Oh, the little love. Wouldn't I like to be her mate this instant? Oh, and oh, the gold she's wearing. Oh, upon my word, I've half a mind to kiss her. Kiss her, you fool. Her beak's a pair of spits. Uh, come, uh, come, uh, go in. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, lead on, <laughs> and luck go with us. Darling, oh, tawny throat. Love, whom I love the best, dearer than all the rest. Playmate and partner in all my sweet songs. Thou art come, thou art come, thou hast dawned on my gaze. I, I have heard, heard thy sweet note. note. Nightingale, nightingale, thou from thy flute. Softly sounding canst bring. Music to suit. With our songs of the spring. Begin then, I pray, our own anapestic address to essay. You men who are dimly existing below, who perish and fade as a leaf, hail, woe begone, shadow-like, spiritless folk, feeble and wingless and brief, frail castings in clay who are gone in a day. Like a dream full of sorrow and sighing, come listen with care to the birds of the air, the ageless, the deathless, who flying in the joy and the freshness of ether, are wont to muse upon wisdom undying. We will tell you of things transcendental, of springs and of rivers, the mighty upheaval, the nature of birds, the birth of the gods, and of chaos, the darkness primeval. There was never a race of immortals at all, till love had the universe blended. Then, all things commingling together in love, there arose the fair earth, and the sky, and the limitless sea, and the race of the gods, the blessed, who never shall die. Then, then take us for gods, as is proper and fit, and use as prophetic your habit your call. Spring, winter, and, and summer, and autumn, and all. We won't run away from your worship, and sit up above in the clouds, very stately and grand, like Zeus in his tempers. But always at hand, health and wealth will bestow, as the formula runs, on yourselves and your sons, and the sons of your sons. Happiness. 
plenty. And peace shall belong to you all. And the rebel. And dance. And the song. And laughter. And youth will supply. We'll never forsake you. You'll be quite overburdened with pleasures and joys. So happy and blessed we will make you. Is there anyone amongst you, old spectators, who would lead with the birds a life of pleasure? Let him come to us with speed. All that here is reckoned shameful, all that here the laws condemn. With the birds is right and proper. You may do it all with them. Truly, Truly to, to be glad in feather is, is the very best of things. Only fancy, dear spectators, had you each a brace of wings. Never need you tired and hungry at a tragic drama stay. You would lightly, when it bored you, spread your wings and fly away. Back returning after luncheon to enjoy our comic play. The brilliant plumage of the bird chorus is enhanced as the actors now move in measured tread about the altar in the center of the orchestra to the accompaniment of the music. The spirit of contest is certainly uppermost in the Greek mind, whether it be in athletics or art. The price of admission averages 18 cents, but the state provides passes for those who do not have the necessary fee. And should Aristophanes win the contest, he will receive as his award a jar of wine and about $18 in cash. Everyone refers to Aristophanes, the 31-year-old author of The Birds, as the looking glass of Athens, for he reflects in his plays, with delightful mockery, every angle of contemporary life. No one escapes his wit and sarcasm. Politics and politician, reforms, city planners, tax evaders, the padded payrolls, even the gods themselves fall beneath his satiric pen when he dips into the broadest farce and comedy. The political situations and life in 20th century America is not unlike that of this 5th century in Greece. We pause for a moment for station identifications. The birds are now circling the great stage. The audience seems convulsed with laughter at the comic appearance of the two old Athenians who enter the stage transformed into birds. <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> By Zeus, I never saw in all my life a sight more laughable. <laughs> huh? uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> at your pin feathers. <laughs> I'll tell you what you like, your wings and you. Just like a gander sketched by some cheat jack. <laughs> and you, you are blackbird with a bull crop nut. <laughs> so, what's, what's the next step? step? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> First, we must give the city some grand big name. And then we'll sacrifice to the high gods. Oh, that's my opinion also. Then, let's consider what the name shall be. What think you of Cloud Cuckooberry? Good. 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 You have found a good big name. And no mistake. And who shall hold the Citadel's stockade? A bird of ours. One of the, uh, Persian breed. Everywhere noted as a war god's own. Oh, Prince Cockerel? Yes, he's just the god to perch upon the rocks. Uh, now, comrade, get you up into the air and lend a hand to those that build the wall. Mm. And send two heralds, one to heaven above and one to earth below, and let them go from hence for me. And you, remaining here, be hanged for me. Oh, go, go where I send you, comrade. Without your help there, nothing will be done. But I, to sacrifice to these new gods, I must call the priest to regulate the show. Uh, boy, boy, uh, take up the basket and the laver. I'm with you. You'll find me quite willing. I highly approve of your killing a lambkin to win us the favor divine. Mid holy processional, stately and fine. On high, on high, let the Pythian cry. The Pythian cry to the god be sent. Oh, stop that puffing. Evalpides! Be thou high priest. Oh, all right, all right. Now to the new gods commence the sacrifice. Let us pray <coughs> to the Hestia bird of the household shrine and the kite that watches her feast divine and to the hero birds and sons of heroes and to the porphyrian rail and to the pelican white and pelican gray and to the black cap and to the tit. Stop, stop your calling, hang you. You better never start it. To the rook and the rock, the and the cock, to the with praise and glory crown, singing O muse of the new and happy town, singing O muse of the new and happy town. Lord of discourse, whatever's this? Why, 
Uh, who in the world are you? Oh, I'm a warbler, caroling sweet lays, an eager, meager servant of the muses, as Homer says. What? You a slave and wear your hair so long? No, but all we who teach sweet choral lays are eager, meager servants of the muses, as Homer says. Oh, that's why your cloak so meager seems, no doubt. <laughs> uh, but, poet, what ill wind has blown you hither? Oh, I've been making, making lovely songs, dithyrambic songs on your cloud kookaberries. Oh, uh, when did you begin these lovely songs? Long, long ago. Mm. Oh, yes, long, long ago. And yeah, he'll cause us trouble now unless we give him something. Oh, uh, if Elpidis, come back. Yes. You've a jerkin and a tunic, too. Strip. Give the jerk into this clever poet. Oh, I'll right. take it. Upon my word, you do seem cold. Mm, this little kindly gift, the muse accepts with willing condescension. Uh, there, take it and depart. Yes, I'll depart and make to the city pretty songs like this. Cloud Cougarberry with praise and glory crowned. Singing on the old of a new and happy town. Over. Singing on the old of a happy town. Over. And now we'll sacrifice the goat. Over. Touch not the goat a while. Huh? Oh. Uh, who are you? A soothsayer. You be hanged. Oh, think not lightly, friend, of things divine. Know you? I've an oracle of Bacchus bearing on your cloud cookerberries. Huh? Then why did you not soothsay that before I founded my city here? The power within forbade me. Uh, well, well, uh, there's not like hearing what it says. First. To Pandora, offer a white-fleeced ram for a victim. Mm. Next, who first shall arrive, my verses prophetic expounding, give him a brand-new cloak and a pair of excellent sandals. Are sandals in it? Take the book and see. Mm. If thou dost as I bid, thou shalt surely soar in the clouds as an eagle. Mm. Refuse, and thou shalt never become an eagle. Or even a dove, or a woodpecker tapping the oak tree. Is all that in it? Take the book and see. <laughs> oh, how unlike your oracle to mine, which from Apollo's words I copied out. But if a cheat, an imposter, presumed to appear uninvited, troubling the sacred rites, hit him betwixt the ribs with all your force and fury. You jesting, surely. Take the book and see. Get out. Uh, we are uh, uh, found uh, you. Uh, 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 Run uh, away and uh, uh, face uh, 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 amongst you. I say, uh, I come amongst Some you. Some new misery, this. Come to do what? I come to land, survey this air of yours, and meet it out by acres. Heaven and earth? <laughs> Whoever are you? Whoever am I? I'm Maton, city planner and surveyor. Oh, and uh, what are these? They're rods for air surveying. With the straight rod, I measure out that so the circle may be squared. And in the center, a marketplace and... Uh, Streets be leading to it straight to the very center, just as from a star, though circular, straight rays flash out in all directions. <laughs> uh, the birds are all resolved with one consent to wallop every quack. Oh, well, I'd best be going. Uh, faith, I'm not quite certain that you're in time. See, see, the blows are coming. Oh, oh, oh. I, I told you how it would be. Come measure off your steps some other way. Uh, I was sent to be commissioner of land. Commissioner? Who sent you hither? Uh, a paltry scroll of Talaeus. Ah. Come now, will you take your pay and get you gone in peace? By heaven, I will. I, I ought to be at home on public business. Then take your pay and go. Your pay's just this and this and this and this and the this. The law and this. says, I say the law says, the law says if the cloud Cucaberian wrong the Athenian. Here's some more writing. What new misery is this? I am a statute seller, and I'm come bring you laws to sell you. Oh, such as what? Items. The cloud Cucaberians are to use the self same waves, weights and measures and the self same coinage as the Clofixians. And you the self same as the old Taxians. I'll overturn your verdict and I will. Uh, seize him, somebody. Ah, <laughs> You're off there, are you? Now <laughs> uh, let's get away from this and go within. And there we'll sacrifice the goat in peace. To the birds, the all controlling, all surveying. Now will men at every altar. Prayers be prayed. We who watch the land, protecting fruit and flower, we slay the swarming insects who the tender buds devour with a never satiate malice, nipping off the blossom as it widens from the chalice. And we slay the noisome creatures which pollute the garden's freshly scented bloom, and every little biter and every creeping thing perish in destruction at the onset of our wings. 
Listen to the city's notice, specially proclaimed today. Sirs, Diagoras the Melian, whosoever of you slay, shall receive reward one talent, and another will bestow. We, the birds, will give a notice. We proclaim with right good will. Sirs, Polocrates, the sparrow killer, whosoever of you kill shall receive reward one talent. If alive you bring him four. Him who strings and sells the finches for seven ovals at his store. And blows the thrushes out and rudely to the public gaze exposes. And shamefully entreats the blackbirds, thrusting feathers up their noses. Pigeons too, the rascal catches. Keeps and heaps them up with care. Makes them labor as decoy birds tethered underneath a snare. Such the notice we would give you. And we wish you all to know who are keeping birds in cages. You had better let them go. Else the birds will surely catch you. And yourselves in turn employ. Tied and tethered up securely. Other rascals to decoy. Now, we wish to tell the judges, in a friendly sort of way, all the blessing we shall give them if we gain the prize today. Ne'er were made to Alexander, lovelier promises or grander. First, what every judge amongst you most of all desires to win, little laureatic owlet shall be always flocking in. You shall find them all about you as the dainty brook increases, building nests within your purses. Hatching little silver pieces. Then, as if in stately temples, shall your happy lives be spent. For the birds will top your mansions with an eagle pediment. If you hold some petty office, if you wish to steal and pick, in your hands we'll place a falcon, very keen and small and quick. If a dinner is in question, crops will send you for digestion. But, but should you the prize deny us, you had better all prepare. Angry birds will wreak their vengeance and attack you. From the air. Dear birds, dear birds, our sacrifice is most auspicious. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but uh, strange it is, no messenger has come from the great wall we're building with the news. Uh, ah, here runs one. Where, where's our leader, Pipes Here, here, here. The building's built, the wall's complete. Oh, well done. And the most grand, magnificent work it is. And then its height, I measured that, is just 600 feet. Why, Pos? Height and what a height. Oh, well, who built it up to that enormous size? The birds, none other. Aha! From Libya came some 30,000 cranes with great foundation stones. Ah. 10,000 storks were carrying up the bricks, and lapwings helped, and the other water birds. You see? To bring the water up into the air in hot. Uh, but how did they get the mortar in? Oh, that was most ingeniously contrived. The geese struck down their feet and slid them under, like shovels, and so heaved it on the hods. And then the ducks, with girdles round their waist, carried the bricks. And up the swallows flew, like serving lads, carrying behind them each his trowel and the mortar in their mouths. <laughs> then why should men hire hirelings anymore? Uh, well, well, go on. Uh, who was it finished off the great wall's woodwork? Canny Pelican! Uh -huh. Excellent workman, hewing with huge beaks, gate timber. And the uproar as they hewed was like an arsenal when ships are building. Now watch the whole way round. And the birds are pacing their beats and carrying bells. And everywhere the guards are stationed. And the beacons blaze on every tower. But I must hurry off and wash myself. You manage what remains. Oh, what ails you? Do you feel surprised to hear the building has been built so soon? By all the gods, I do. And well, I may. In very truth, it seems to me like... Lies. Oh, but see, a guard from thence hey. is running toward us with a war dance. Look. Hello. Hey, why, what's up now? A terrible thing has happened. Huh? One of the guards, of Zeus's guards, hmm? has just given our jackdaw sentinels the slip, shot through the gates and flown into the air. Oh. A dreadful deed. A wicked, scandalous deed. Which of the guards? We know not. A wings he had. So much we know. You should have sent at once a civic guard in hot pursuit. We sent them out at archers. Aye, but the guard is near me, thinks. He's very near. He's somewhere here. Arrows and bows fall in, my merry men all. Ah. War is begun by the gods and me. Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! For close at hand the winged sound I hear of some immortal hurtling through the sky. Where do you come from? Quick. From the Olympian gods. Your name, what is it? I, the Fleet. The Salamanian? 
Why, what's all this disturbance? Fly up some buzzard there. Fly up and seize her. Me? Seize me, do you say? What the plague's this? Now answer me. By what gates got you within the city walls? In faith, I know not, fellow. By what gate? You hear the jade, how she prevaricates. Where's your stock pass? My patience. What do you mean? You never got one? Have you lost your wit? Did no bird captain stick a label on you? On me? None stuck a label, wretch. On me. So, then you thought in this sly, stealthy way to fly through chaos and a realm not yours. And by what route, then, ought the gods to fly? If I know not, but not by this. This is a trespass. If you got your rights, of all the irises that ever were, you be most justly seized and put to death. But I am deathless. Now, all the same for that, you should have died. I, from the father to mankind, I'm flying. To bid them on their bullock slaughtering hearths slay sheep to the Olympian gods and steam the streets with sabre. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> what gods? What gods? To us. The gods in heaven, of course. What? <laughs> are you gods? <laughs> what other gods exist? Birds are now gods to men, and men must slay victims to them, and not by Zeus, to Zeus. Oh, fool, fool, fool. Stir not the mighty wrath of angry gods, lest justice with the spade of vengeful Zeus Demolish all thy rage. Now, listen, girl, have done with that bombast. Look here. If Zeus keep troubling me, I'll soon incinerate his great Amphion's domes and halls of state with eagles carrying fire. Oh, shame upon you, wretch. Your words and you. Now then, be gone. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, my father won't stand this. I vow he won't. Oh, Zeus, a mercy. Maiden, fly you off. Incinerate some younger man than I. Never again shall the Zeus-born gods, never again shall I pass this way. Never again to this realm of ours shall men send up to the heavenly powers the saber of beasts which on earth they slay. Well, but that herald whom we sent to men, it is strange if he should never more return. Oh, uh, Pisaterus, oh, thou wisest best, huh? thou wisest, deepest, happiest of mankind, most glorious, most... Uh, what's the word? Oh, what's the news? Accept this golden crown, wherewith all peoples crown and revere thee for thy wisdom's sake. Oh, I do. <clears throat> uh, what makes them all revere me so? Oh, thou who hast built the ethereal glorious city, dost thou not know how men revere thy name? They are all bird-mad now, and imitate the birds, and joy to do whatever birds do. And let me tell you this, more than 10,000 men will soon be here, all wanting wings and taloned modes of life. Somehow or other, you must find them wings. Oh, then by Zeus, no time for dallying now. Uh, quick, run you in, collect the crates and baskets and fill them all with wings. That done, then bring them out. Whilst I, remaining here, receive the wingless travellers as they come. Very soon, fully man will this city be called, if men in such numbers invade us. Not false, methinks, the tale our envoy told us. <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, dear. Uh, uh, pray heaven that Zeus won't see me. Uh, uh, where's Pisaterus? Uh, I'm Pisaterus. <laughs> Why, whatever is here? <laughs> What's this uh, enratment? Uh, see you any guard following behind me there? Hmm? Not I, by Zeus. But uh, who are you? And uh, what's the time of day? The time of day? Yes. A little afternoon. But who are you? Uh, now then, I'll unwrap. Oh, oh, my dear Prometheus. Oh. Hush! Don't shout like that. Why? What's up now? Don't speak my name so loudly. It would be my ruin if Zeus see me here. Uh, but now I'll tell you all that's going on up in the sky. If you'll uh, just take the umbrella and hold it over... That no god may see me. Ha, ha, ha. A crafty thought. <laughs> Prometheus, like all over. <laughs> uh, get under then. Go on, my case, my case. <laughs> uh, speak out freely. Uh, then listen. Speak, I'm listening, never fear. All's up with Zeus. Oh! Good gracious me. 
Since when? Since first you built your city in the air. For never from that hour does mortal bring burnt offerings to the gods, or savory steam ascend to heaven from flesh of victims slain. And the barbarous gods, half starved, vow that they'll come marching down on Zeus. What? Are there really other gods? Barbarians? Up above you? They're barbarians? Yes. Oh. And what's the name of these barbarian gods? Uh, the name? Trebalians. Ah, I understand. It is from that quarter tribulation comes, huh? Exactly <laughs> so. And now I'll tell you this. Envoys will soon be here to treat for peace. Sent down by Zeus and uh, those Trevalians there. But make no peace, mind that, unless King Zeus restores the scepter to the birds again and gives yourself Miss Sovereignty to wife. Hmm? And who's Miss Sovereignty? Oh, the loveliest girl. Oh. <laughs> to she who keeps the thunderbolts of Zeus and all his stores, good counsels, happy laws, sound common sense, dockyards, abuse of speech. Oh, why then, she keeps everything. Of course she does. Uh, we'll have from Zeus, and uh, you'll have everything. <laughs> now, I hasten here that I might tell you this. You know I am well disposed to all mankind. Aye, uh, but for you we couldn't fry our eggs. Uh, fish. And I hate every god. Uh, you know that, don't you? Aye, aye, aye. Uh, but it's time to go. Let's have the umbrella. Mm -hmm. uh, then if Zeus perceives me, he'll think I'm following the basket bearer. <laughs> huh? What? Look there. Where? Upon that cloud. Oh. Three gods have made their way unto us. Poseidon, Heracles, and... Uh, what, who? Oh, that. Uh, that's the Trebalion. Oh. Oh. Ah. Uh, I see. There, fellow envoys, for in sight, the town where to be are bound, cloud cookerberry stands. You, Trebalion, what are you at? Oh. In your cloak left-sided. Oh. Shifted round rightly. Oh, oh self. Yeah. My goodness, you're a born barbarian. <gasps> oh, oh, democracy, what will you bring us to at last, I wonder? If voting gods elect a clown like this. Who's off there, will you? Hang you, but you're by far the uncouthest god I ever came across. Now, Heracles, what's to be done? You've heard what I propose. I'd throttle the man offhand, whoever he is that dares blockade the gods. My dear good fellow, you forget. We are sent to treat for peace. I'd throttle him all the more. <laughs> uh, now, birds, uh, uh, hand me the grater. <laughs> uh, bring the sylphium. You, birds, come, come on. Uh -huh. Now then, the cheese. Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, blow up the fire a little. <laughs> we three immortal gods, with words of greeting, salute the man. Hmm? Oh, oh <laughs> uh, I'm grating sylphium now. What's this the flesh of? Uh, birds. <laughs> birds tried and sentenced for rising up against the popular party. Then you great Sylphium do you over them first? Oh, oh welcome, Heracles. <laughs> eh. What brings you hither? We are envoys sent down by the gods to settle terms of peace. There's no more oil remaining in the flask. Oh, dear. And birds' flesh should be rich and glistening. Mm. We gods gain nothing by the war. It was not we who ever wished for war. And now, even now, if ye come prepared with fair proposals, ye will find us ready to treat for peace. What I call fair is this. Let Zeus restore the scepter to the birds and all make friends. If ye accept this offer, I'll ask the envoys in to share our banquet. I am altogether satisfied and vote what rich. A fool and glutton, that's what you are. Oh, sir. Would you rob your father of his kingdom? Why say you so? Why, ye'll be mightier far. Ye gods above, if birds bear rule below, now men go sulking underneath the clouds and swear false oaths and call the gods to witness. But when ye've got the birds for your allies, if a man swear by the raven and by Zeus, the raven will come by and unawares fly up and swoop and peck the perjurer's eye out. Now by you. Uh, Poseidon. There's some sense in that. And so say I. And you, Trevelyan? Persuasive. You see, <laughs> he quite a sense. <laughs> and, and now I'll give you another instance of the good ye'll gain. If a man vow a victim to a god, 
and then would shuffle off with cunning words saying in greedy lust the gods wait long this too will make him pay you tell me how why when that man is counting out his money or sitting in his bath a kite shall pounce down unawares and carry off the price of two fat lambs and bear it to the god i say again i vote we give the scepter back to the birds ask the trebalion next you there do you want a drubbing? I did time, I sticky beat him. There, aha, <laughs> he's all for me. Well then, if so you wish it, so we'll have it. Mm. Aye, you there. We do accept your terms about the scepter. Oh, 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 oh by Zeus, there's one thing more I've just remembered. <laughs> As Zeus may retain his hair eye if he will, but the young girl, Miss Sovereignty, he must give me to wife. This looks not like a treaty. Let's be journeying homeward. As you will. Ah, now, cook, <coughs> uh, be sure you make the gravy rich. Why, man alive, Poseidon, where are you off to? What? Are we going to fight about one woman? What shall we do? Do come to terms at once. You oaf. So he's gulling you. You can't see it. Well, it's yourself you're ruining. If Zeus restore the kingdom to the birds and die, <laughs> you'll be a pauper. Hmm? You were the one to get whatever money Zeus may leave behind him. Oh, oh, the way he's trying to cousin you. Mm. Step aside, I want to whisper something. <clears throat> your uncle's fooling you, poor dupe. <laughs> By the law, no shred of all your father's money falls to you. You're not heir. Your mother was an alien. Oh, bless the fool. <laughs> How did you think Athena could be heiress, being a girl, if she had lawful brethren? Well... But suppose my father leaves me all. Oh. The law won't let him. Poseidon here, who now excites you on, will be the first to claim the money then as lawful brother and your father's heir. What? None of all my father's goods to fall to me? No, not one farthing. Uh, uh, tell me this. Has he enrolled you ever in the guild? Hmm. He never has. Ah. I've often wondered why. Oh, come. Don't look so assault and battery wise. Join us, my boy. <laughs> I'll make you autocrat and feed you all your days on pigeon's milk. Mm. I'm quite convinced you're right about the girl. I said restore her, and I say so now. <sighs> and what say you? I, I vote the other way. Oh. <laughs> all rests with this trebalion. What say you? Me? Oh, Gluna Chame Grate Sabrano Bagito Store. There, he said restore her. Oh, no, by Zeus. He never said restore her. He said to migrate as the swallows do. Oh, then he said restore her to the swallows. You too conclude and settle terms of peace. Since you both voted, <laughs> I will say no more. All right, young man. We're quite prepared to give you all you ask. So come along, come up to heaven yourself, and take the sovereignty. And all that's there. Oh, so then these birds were slaughtered just in time to grace our wedding banquet. Would you like me to stay and uh, <coughs> roast the meat while you three go? To roast the meat? Mm. To taste the meat, you mean? <laughs> Come along. <laughs> Do. I'd have enjoyed it, though. Ho oh, there, within. Bring out a wedding robe. Oh, all successful, more than tongue can tell. O oh, ye thrice blessed winged race of birds, welcome your king returning to his halls. He comes. No star has ever gleamed so fair, sparkling refulgent in its gold-rayed home. The full far-flashing splendor of the sun ne'er shone so gloriously as he who comes, bringing a bride too beautiful for words, wielding the winged thunderbolt of Zeus. Up to heaven's highest vault, sweet sight, Ascends fragrance ineffable, while gentlest airs the fume of incense scatter far and wide. He comes. He is here. Now let the heavenly muse open her lips with pure auspicious strains. Well hast thou wed for the town of the birds. Great are the blessings, and mighty and wonderful, which through his favor our nation possesses. Welcome them back, both himself and this sovereignty. Welcome with nuptial and bridal addresses. And love, with his pinions of gold, came driving, all blooming and spruce, as groomsmen and squires.
require to behold the wedding of Hera and Zeus, of Zeus, Zeus and his beautiful bride. Hymen, O Hymenaeus. Hymen, O Hymenaeus. I delight in your hymns. I delight in your songs. Your words I admire. Now sing of the trophies he brings us from heaven. The earth crashing thunders. Deadly and dark. The lightnings, angry flashes of fire. And, and the dread, dread white boat of the leaven. Blaze of the lightning, so terribly beautiful. Golden and grand. Fire flashing javelin, glittering ever in Zeus's right hand. Earth crashing thunder. The hoarsely resounding. The bringer of showers. He is your master. Tis he that is shaking the earth with your powers. All that was Zeus is of old. Now is our heroes alone. Sovereignty, fair to behold. Partner of Zeus on his throne. Now is forever his own. Hymen, O oh Hymenaeus. Now follow on, dear feathered tribes, to see us wed. Mount up to Zeus' golden floor and nuptial bed. And, oh, my darling, reach thine hand and take my wing and dance with me. And I will lightly bear thee up and carry thee and carry thee. Raise a joyous paean cry. Raise a song of victory. <laughs> Love whom I love the best, dearer than all the rest, playmate and partner in all my sweet songs. Thou art come, thou art come, thou hast dawned on my gaze. I have heard thy sweet note, nightingale, nightingale, thou from thy flute, softly sounding can spring, music to suit, with our songs of the spring. Be him that I pray, our own anapestic address to us say. The chorus is now leaving the stage. The vast audience stands to applaud the members of the cast and Aristophanes, the author of The Birds. The dramatization of Aristophanes' comedy, The Birds, which you've just heard, was by Blevins Davis and was directed by Albert N. Williams. The cast of characters included Evolpides, Louis Van Ruten, Pistheterus, Burford Hampton, Terius, the Hoopo Bird, John Brewster. Prometheus was played by William Shelley. Poseidon, Charles Webster. Tubalion, Ralph Locke. Heracles was played by Mark Smith. The Birds was the first of a series of great plays to be presented on Saturday afternoon at the same time over these same stations. This has been an NBC educational feature. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>